Welcome to uh, the final session. It's always difficult at the end of a, a long conference to uh, attend the final session, so thank you for, uh, for coming this afternoon. My name's uh, Michael Buckley. I'm, uh, as you probably gathered from the accent, an Australian, and I've been uh, quite uh, honoured to be asked to chair this session um, on innovations in anti-ageing medicine. So uh, I am the first speaker, and uh, I will be talking about the efficacy, safety, and cost effectiveness of scrotal application uh, of testosterone cream over existing treatments such as gels and injections. If I give you a little bit of background on, uh, on myself, I'm a pharmacist. Uh, I worked in a retail pharmacy for a number of years. I had a very strong interest in uh, nutritional medicine. I explored various areas of uh, herbal therapies, homeopathy, and uh, led me into the areas of uh, bioidentical hormones and I was the first compounding pharmacy uh, in Australia back in the early 90s and I used, uh, started looking at progesterone and then expanded into um, estradiol and also progesterone in cream forms. I felt, uh, uh, but I found after a couple of years of doing that and the products worked very successfully but dealing with uh, mainstream conventional medical practitioners that there was always an issue with uh, proving that the bioidenticals actually had the scientific backing to and the, uh, the credibility that the big pharma preparations did have. So I changed in 1995 to um, uh, conventional, uh, established what's called Lawley Pharmaceuticals, which is a mainstream uh, pharmaceutical company uh, producing uh, to um, international GMP standards, good manufacturing practice standards, uh, bioidentical hormone creams, and that's uh, what I specialise in. So my bent is very much uh, the use of topical creams through transdermal absorption of the basic sex, sex steroids, uh, estradiol, E2, uh, progesterone and testosterone. And part of the testosterone is we uh, have, have concentrated in two areas. Obviously male testosterone is one, but female in, uh, back in the 90s, and it's only in the last couple of years that there's actually been any government approved testosterone creams available. Uh, ours is one in Australia, and also the patch, uh, testosterone patch, transdermal patch, is available in Europe. And it currently, obviously, as most people are aware, there's no government approved, FDA approved testosterone products in the United States, which uh, there's a very big market and a big demand there for it as well, using bioidentical testosterone. So uh, dealing obviously with, uh, with scrotal testosterone, um, as I said, I'm from Australia, from down under, and we're talking about application down under. So what I'd like to, uh, to present to you today is uh, a, a presentation in three parts. And the first part, what I'd like to uh, look at is the um, bioequivalence between using a, a transdermal cream as opposed to a transdermal gel. Um, Androgel or Testogel in other parts of the world as it's marketed is uh, the market leader in the United States. You also have Testim and uh, as the two main stream big pharma uh, testosterone gels. And I'd like to um, establish in the first part that a cream does exactly what a gel does. The second part will move uh, towards looking directly at scrotal application and the benefits of using a uh, product scrotally as distinct from um, other body parts, and thirdly, looking at some of the uh, issues facing the expansion and appropriate prescribing of uh, testosterone um, in androgen deficient males. As uh, most people are no doubt aware, there's a uh, reasonably long history with the use of testosterone. Uh, it's been available for uh, six or so decades, um, and it's only recently in the past 10 years or so that the transdermal route of testosterone, that's uh, through a topical application, has uh, been widely accepted following uh, fairly extensive clinical studies. As you no doubt heard through uh, the last couple of days and in, in uh, other seminars, that, that uh, testosterone uh, treatment for the relief of androgen deficiency uh, has an effect on libido, on mood, uh, on sexual function, um, has a uh, role in bone metabolism and also in diabetes 2 and metabolic syndrome. And there's quite a significant number of 
um, products on the market in, in various forms, but in terms of transdermals, the gels, uh, and the patch is uh, patch is rather old now and uh, and really uh, very user unfriendly and uh, the gels have really superseded the use of transdermal patches. Lawley Pharmaceuticals in uh, in 2002 uh, started off. We started off using um, our preparation, a 5% testosterone cream. We looked at applying it to the upper body, and one of the first things that we did was looking at doing a dose finding study, which establishes clearly uh, the optimum dose that you use with any particular preparation. And as part of that, what we did was we recruited uh, men with primary and secondary hypogonadism. That's, these are the men with whose testosterone levels were uh, well below the normal levels. Uh, a lot of these men were castrates or suffer, um, had Kleinfelter syndrome and various other androgen um, deficient, very severe androgen deficiency states. And what we did is we uh, used a 50 milligram, 100 milligram and 200 milligram dose of testosterone in a cream form and studied them over a, uh, over a 24 hour period from a single dose application. We found that uh, when we combined the studies, uh, when we combined all the results, that there was a peak absorption of around about eight to 10 hours for most men. And when we looked more closely at the data, the, uh, the raw data showed that, as you would expect, you tended to get, sorry, this is a little sensitive. There was a, uh, I'll use, I'll go to the screen to the right, You'd see there was, for the three different doses, the higher dose, uh, you got a higher serum testosterone level and it dropped down with a lower level. But when you actually looked at the um, uh, baseline levels, we found that the optimal dose was using 100 milligram dose of testosterone applied to the upper body. Remember, this is an upper body application as distinct from a scrotal application, which we'll move on to with, uh, a little further into the talk. So, as is commonly known with the transdermals, some men you can put higher doses of testosterone in, but the skin is, the rate, is in fact a rate limiting uh, factor to the absorption. So the skin will take in so much, but if you keep upping the dose, it won't take in any more. So skin in, in its, by, its very, um, by its very composition is actually a, a fairly strict barrier to the absorption of most things. And there's only very few items if you think what's available transdermally, things like nicotine patches, uh, the steroids, and, uh, and some of the analgesics that are actually absorbed through the skin. The skin is a very tough barrier, and it's because the skin, uh, the stratum cornea, is composed of polarizing lipids, and they form a very impermeable, impermeable barrier to the absorption. And even with steroids, which are well absorbed, they do, it does in fact have its own rate, it is its own rate limiting um, uh, fact 